Hello, and welcome to my presentation. I thought we did things right until I went looking about security errors in Norwegian websites. My name is Ova Pettersen, and I work for Capture Gemini in Stavanger. If you don't know, this presentation will be about penetration testing. So if you don't know what that is, you can come talk to me afterwards. Uh, I will present three cases where I found some security vulnerabilities. So let's just start. The first case is a popular Norwegian newspaper. I'm sure most of the Norwegians in the room are reading this newspaper pretty frequently. And one day when I was logging into this website, at the top right corner where it says who you're logged in as, there was another person's name. And uh, my first reaction was, there has to be something wrong here. Something is not functioning properly. And uh, I, I needed to start digging. I looked at all the requests that were, that were sent in the when you loaded the web page, and I went, I found that in Firefox developer tools. And uh, this is one of the requests I found, get user data, which gets first name, last name, email, and some settings you have for the website. So this is a request that we're failing once. So what I wanted to do, I wanted to send this request a lot of times, just to see what happened. And for every time I sent in, I, I, I cleared all the cookies, so it shouldn't persist any of the previously retrieved data. And uh, this is the result after sending around 15 requests. My data are the ones with 1.32 kilobyte, as you can see in the right corner. So that, that means in these few requests, there are three occurrences of someone else's data. And uh, that's definitely not a good thing. So I need to disclose it. I reached out on uh, Twitter and got in contact with the journalist who redirected me to the IT department. The IT department took it pretty seriously. They asked me for all the details, and I gave them everything I knew. And they fixed it in a couple of days, and then asked me to verify it. And I went in and did. Uh, I never found out why it only works sometimes. That's the weird thing about it. But uh, I just accepted. And the uh, cool thing about this disclosure was that they offered me a pretty awesome reward. Not a Nobel pr Prize, <laughs> but uh, they gave me a one-year subscription to the website <laughs> for premium articles. So now I can read all the free articles. And uh, I really appreciate this. The most important part for me is that they actually fix the problem, not the, not the reward, but it's, it's still fine. <laughs> OK, the next case is one of Norway's biggest power companies. This as well I can't name. But uh, have you ever heard the saying that necessity is the mother of invention? After I applied to NDC, I figured I need more content. So the first thing I did was I, <laughs> I logged into my power provider. And this is what awaits you when you log into a control panel. Here we have a list of uh, the invoices connected to the user. And I wanted to look at the requests that were sent here. So I opened Firefox DevTools again. And this is one of the requests. Here we have a URL with customer ID put in two places. The first time with 00001 behind. For me, it seemed like a way to obfuscate the URL, but uh, clearly not a good one. Uh, and I, couldn't, I could see that the customer numbers were pretty, they looked incremental. So I wanted to check what happens if I take my customer number and add one. And this is what happened. I got another person's data. Uh, <laughs> list of invoices with due date, amount, uh, and if it's due or not, and even a link to the PDF containing the whole power bill. So I needed to disclose this. I went on. Um, I went to customer service and pretty fast got, got in contact with the IT manager. And at first, they didn't know about the PDF links because I, I didn't quite figure out myself. So they, had a, they said they couldn't see any evidence of any personal data leaking. But uh, afterwards, I told them about the PDF links. The, the weird thing about the PDF link was that it only worked if the user had been logged in within the last hour. Then you can access all the, the PDFs. So that's why it was uh, hard to find out. But when I told them this, they had a pretty different reaction <laughs> because they took down the whole website. <laughs> and this was actually down for a whole week before they managed to fix it. So, but, uh, but really credits to them for taking it seriously that, uh, they, that get, they didn't give me any reward. Like I wanted free power, but uh, <laughs> I didn't get any. But uh, for me, it's the most important thing that they fix the problem. Like here you have a lot of customer data and mind customer data as well. I don't want that to be leaking. So the next case is the only case I get to mention by name, and I'm pretty happy for that. It's a company called Brillan, which sells sunglasses and glasses and contact lenses. And uh, have you ever heard about Bobby Tables? 
Hi, my name is Hova Script. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if I can actually change my legal name to this. That would be pretty awesome. Uh, this is often how it looks when I register for websites. I, tr I try to write scripts as like four names or last names to see if they run. And in this case, they did. So this is a case of uh, persistent cross site scripting. That means that every time you will go to this web page, the script will run. As, and that's not a good thing. So I needed to report it. I went to the customer service, and uh, this is how I imagine customer service running to the IT department, <laughs> because this is actually pretty crazy. I reported it at 14 on a Friday afternoon, and got a response from the customer service half an hour later at 14.30. And the IT manager contacted me at 16, just half and one and a half hour later. And the morning after, on a Saturday morning at 6.30, I got a mail saying the fix was deployed. That means one poor developer was probably sitting up fixing this issue while most of you were out drinking. And so from report to fix, 16 hours and 30 minutes, and I think that's really impressive uh, on a Friday afternoon. A really good thing about this disclosure was that they gave me a pretty awesome reward. <laughs> they gave me a 3,000 knock gift card to use on their stores. So I went out and bought the most expensive sunglasses I've ever had. <laughs> <laughs> So that's, that's really awesome that I took take it so seriously and even give me a reward. I really appreciate that. So what do you need to think about if you're a developer? You need to know there's a difference between authentication and authorization. Authentication is the act of getting the user authenticated to the website, but authorization means access control, like is, uh, should the user be able to access a certain uh, resource? And that's where is what is... I see a lot of um, websites go wrong when it comes to APIs. They forget to put proper authorization on the APIs, APIs like the power company. To avoid cross site scripting, you need to escape special characters from writing text out. That means remove all special characters like crocodile signs and everything used to write scripts. Then you should be safe. And uh, the last thing is be kind to your bug reporters. Like I do this on my free time for fun. And uh, uh, there's no need, of, need to bash me. And, uh, all these companies I've shown have been really kind to me. They're taking it seriously, and some of them even gave me an awesome reward. So I'm really grateful for that. And what do you do if you find a bug? If you find a bug on someone else's website, the first thing you need to do, and the most important thing, do a responsible disclosure. That means come clean, tell them everything you did, how you did it, uh, so they can start fixing it. And when you do, never go more than plus one. That means you don't need to send them the whole database just to prove that you got access to it. The only thing you need is your data and some data you shouldn't really have access to, and that should be enough for the company to start fixing the issue. And the last point is don't publish anything about the issue before it's fixed. There's no need to go on the blog or Twitter and saying, I found a security vulnerability when it's still out there. Then people will just start uh, using that security vulnerability. So always wait until the company has gotten time to fix it. So my main message today is let's make the web safer together. Uh, now you know a little bit about which types of security vulnerabilities you can encounter on uh, websites. You know what to do uh, if you're a developer and want to prevent uh, these issues from happening. And you know what to do if you find some issue on other people's websites. So thank you. <laughs>